Winning a national championship doesn't happen overnight. It takes months of preparation and dedication. That's why we have to play hard, play smart, play disciplined, play together, and play and act like champions. the game I'm like we're not locked in like this is not right this is I just felt like everybody thought this was gonna be a breeze like this was gonna be easy even though our older teammates had specifically said like Missouri is a hard team like this is not gonna be no walk in the park it is opening night in the SEC and the lights are gonna be on at Mizzou Arena you know right off the bat kind of got a feeling like okay this might be a little weird game you know once the ball was jumped up of course, we get every team's best, so of course we're expecting that. But I think, you know, sometime during the game, it kind of hit us like, okay, they're not going away. They're not going away at all. Credit Mizzou's defense. They suffocate the low post players down low for South Carolina. During the game, it was really hard for me just because I feel like we weren't playing up to par as what we needed to do. We're, we had some defensive breakdowns that we usually lock in on, and so that was very frustrating. <laughs> I don't know if we took our, our foot off the gas, and I don't know if our players really understood going to Missouri and playing Missouri at Missouri, what it does, what it's done, you know, what they've done to us in the past there is, we haven't won a whole lot of games there. It's SEC, when you're a player and you coach, you know every night is going to be a fight. At halftime, we're just like, dang, like, who are we? Like, this is really us, this is what we're doing? During the game, we never felt like we were gonna lose and I think that was part of the problem because I think, you know, we always have this like superwoman power, like, oh, we, we're gonna be able to figure it out and, you know, come back out on top at the end of the day. But this game, we just couldn't do it. After the game, I think I was just really upset. I was really upset about how everything happened. I felt like there were just key plays that happened during the game that if we had just locked down and tightened up on, then we would have came out with the win. But we had to take that one and learn from it and move on. We lost that game, and then it gave us perspective. It gave us an opportunity to see where we were vulnerable, to see where, um, although we played a, you know, an incredible non-conference season to come into a new season, the SEC season, um, it really jolted us into just locking down and, and, and staying focused and not taking anybody lightly. We never like losses to teach us lessons, but it definitely did. Um, we had a long talk and a lot of different changes after that game, um, which prepared us for greatness. Those steps were definitely needed, and especially during that time of the season when we're starting to play conference games. I feel like that was like a, a wake up call for us to really try to get it together, you know, and come out and, and play each game um, to the best of our ability. We had known all along the target was on our back. Um, everybody was going to give us their best shot. And I think that's the part that you have to continually try to explain to them. Like, you know, they're playing the game and they want to win. Teams that are preparing, like I would explain to them, you remember when we play so-and-so, you know how you feel, and then you play another team, like there's a, it's a little more oomph when you're playing, you know, a team that has that number one uh, target on their back. So I thought that was part of our growth too, like getting them to acclimate to that and getting them to understand that everybody that stepped on that court with us was in our way. After Missouri game, I feel like the coaches changed a little bit in how tough they were on us. I feel like Coach knew that she couldn't let us take any game lightly. She let us know, like, I'm going to push y'all harder. Like, I'm, I'm going, I know I can, I can push y'all harder. Y'all have more in y'all. So we made sure we went hard and gave 110% every time. Corner. Good. 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 The practice after the zoo, Coach was in our butt so hard. I mean, she, the littlest mistake, it was, let's go ahead and do these burpees right now. Like, let's get straight to it. And. I just remember like, you know, everybody was just going so hard at practice. Like the, 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 the focus was there. Like we were so driven and we did not want to take another L like that again. 
as a staff, we had to get back on, you know, getting back to the details, getting back to the toughness, getting back to getting them refocused and uh, moving forward for, and, and getting us ready for the remainder of the SEC. I, I know when we're, when we're just getting in you, it feels like a whole, whole lot. It's not a whole lot. It's, it's little subtle changes to your game that will make a big difference. It is on you to be disciplined enough to execute. It's little, it's not a, you know, overhaul of, I gotta change my entire game. It's, it's fairly simple when you actually sit back and think about it. So just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying to discipline to what we need at this point. It may change later on, but for right now, this is where we are. Okay, where we are. The Gamecocks team has bounced back after an overtime loss to Missouri with a win over Mississippi State and remains number one ranked. It's a big game. The crowd's going to be loud. Let's just stay off the floor. We need to go off the live ball turnovers. Push it. Let's make it stay. Make it stay. No, they're coming for it next, so we play like how we play. Yeah, that is making it count. Underway in what will be a heavyweight battle every time these teams change possession. You don't get to be number one just because somebody wants to give you that number. They are not going to be intimidated or scared. 32-24, LSU leading. What a game we have seen so far. But just as soon as LSU celebrates for a second, South Carolina's right back down the floor. And now South Carolina on a bit of a roll. The first half belonged to LSU. The second half belonged to South Carolina by a bigger margin. Seventh win now for South Carolina against a top 15 team. Thank you, Thank you. The game for us, there's some things in the game that we absolutely had to, had to do to win. And we found a way to do that. And that's just grit and grit. Grit never gave up. Um, we had a big play after big play. And we had some um, some plays in which, you know, went the other way. <clears throat> Stakes. And we just just keep forging through. And there's nothing you can do but just keep forging through. <clears throat> Honestly, that's SEC basketball. Like, at its finest. Like, that's what it is. Um, and we get a little extra because of who we are. We've sustained in this league. We've sustained success in this league, and, and people are going to keep coming at us. Every game is going to be a dog fight, so we just we just have to fight. Our goals for SC play was you know, to win the SC tournament and be regular season champs and just to completely dominate. I think we have the hardest conference out of any other conference and so just being able to play tough basketball against those talented players. To win every every opponent that stepped in front of us was our, was our main, main goal. But to also just have fun, I think that was the main thing for us because the SEC is super fun. We got, to, got the chance to play a lot of good girls. This is a physical South Carolina team. They're big, they're long, they're in tremendous condition, and they love to play on both sides of the floor. They're the number one team in the nation for a reason. They are tested, and they have depth and talent at all positions. that three-pointer, Destiny Henderson has joined the 1,000-point club at South Carolina. Coach Staley's got her bench in, and her bench is incredibly productive. I mean, that's got to be a luxury to be able to go down the bench and be able to put them in and continue the momentum. South Carolina has been so impressive this season against top 25 opponents. Gonna add another win to their ledger. We didn't give them anything. We were still contesting shots. Um, and, and that's the way we have to play. Every game, 
every time we step on the floor. Like you played like you weren't going to lose the game, and it was never in doubt. Um, so super proud that you you played like you practiced. And it's eight in a row for top-ranked South Carolina, who led wire to wire in Gainesville. Huge statement. You'd say South Carolina at home, getting better as the season goes on. South Carolina, a wire to wire victory in Lexington. 72, 54, the final score. An impressive afternoon for top ranked South Carolina. Holding Auburn to a season low 38 points. When you play defense like South Carolina, when you rebound like South Carolina, you got a chance every night. But when you're making buckets, it makes it almost impossible for any opponent. Being number one comes with comes with pressure. You know, you're you're always the target, um, and everybody's always playing. You know, target practice against you, and I I just feel like the experienced players really understood what it meant. And they, they did not allow the pressure to get to them. A lot was going on with social media. You know, it's college game day and then it's senior night and you know, all the fans are gonna show up. So I think there's just a lot to see on social media, see it leading up. I never really even knew what college game day was, so I didn't really understand what was going on. Um, I remember just going through warm-ups, and I'm like, why are these people on the court? Like, these people, it was just so crazy to me. And then the the camera was panning around, and, and like, the lighting was a little different, so, like, I can't really see what's up there, so I would warm up, and, like, I kind of see the normal crowd. And I looked up, and I was like, wow, like, this place is packed. Like, that was, like, monumental for like women's sports as a whole. Just having college games in there, having it all women like at the, at the table at the panel. Um, it was really, really cool. And then Leticia had a dunk during warm-ups on TV. That was really cool. Everyone in there, whether it was like Tennessee fans or our fans, it was super cool. It was like, it just makes you feel good about the progression of women's sports. They have a sellout, um, they have, you know, L. Duncan, they have Carolyn Pett on campus celebrating women's basketball in a fashion with our incredible fans was the tip, you know, of the iceberg of what college women's basketball can be. It's always fun when you play Tennessee. You know, it's always a, a big game. The fans always come out and show out, and we just get extra excited. You know, before the game, it was senior night, so, you know, emotions are really high, and, you know, I'm just, me personally, I'm like, man, this is my last game at the CLA, regular season in front of all the fans. And so, you know, each of our seniors, you know, had those moments, but our teammates were right there and, you know, making us smile. Just enjoying, you know, everybody being there, um, my family and whatnot, and um, just everybody having fun and um, just trying to play a game that we love together. Lights are out, sandstorm is coming. You know, that means Tip is on the way. It was different, because I mean, I've never been in such a big environment for real. So it was just like, knowing that a lot of people was there watching us, watching women's play, women period play. I was like, all right, we're building something here. I feel like we have the best fans in college basketball. They just going out there, seeing them, cheering for us. Like, they don't have to come to the games. You know, they come, right. and it's girls basketball at that, and we pack out the whole Colonial Life Arena. Going into the game, I was a little nervous just because my hair was orange, and I wasn't sure how Coach Daly was going to react. <laughs> and so that was what I was focused on. But during the game, I felt like we were playing together as a team, and we were doing well when we were getting defensive stops, so I wasn't really stressed at all, and then after the game, we came out with the dub, and it was a great college game day for us. What a performance by the Gamecocks. You see why they're the number one team in the nation. And we saw history, Aaliyah Boston with her 19th straight double-double to tie Sylvia Fowles for the SEC record. That was probably the best atmosphere I can think of that we had. It was, it was crazy, like the fans. Uh, we had like the uh, broadcasting people like on the court. 
Um, it was it was super fun. Um, that was one of the best games for sure for me. The atmosphere, I think, is what got us going early the way we did, and, and it helped us get that win. You know, South Carolina, we we make moves, and you know we changed the, the narrative of women's basketball, and it showed. I mean, they put out a show, our students came, and they were super hyped for the game. And so we just got super hyped the entire pregame, during the game, and after, we were just hyped. And just, you know, thankful for College Game Day and, you know, the fans for just putting out a show and watching us beat Tennessee. We have seen the number one team in the nation look like the number one team tonight. South Carolina has shot 53% from the field. We saw history with Aaliyah Boston getting her 20th consecutive double-double, a new SEC record. South Carolina gets the win tonight, 89 to 48. The entire SEC title belongs to South Carolina. Last year, we didn't, we actually didn't win the regular season. So definitely being able to, to get back that goal that we had last year. Uh, we all knew that we didn't get it last year, so we went into that game knowing that we needed to knock that out and, um, and attack that goal and get it done. Like at one point, we thought we were going to have to share it, and we made sure that that was not, not going to be the case because obviously we don't want to share. In the beginning of the season, Coach talked about, you know, kind of tallying up um, our accolades as we go down the road for the big championship, and that was definitely one of them. To me, it definitely meant we, we, we held our ground, I feel like, through that, that long, uh, SEC season, I think we were able to, you know, maintain, even though, you know, our boat got rocked a little bit at some points, but just being able to maintain and uh, finish out. We were just like, all right, we've, we've checked another goal off our list, and now let's continue to put in the work, you know, to check the other goals off. Last game of the season to the SEC tournament, the plan is to go out with a bang to get ourselves started. Let's go. The number one team in the country, the regular season champions in the SEC, South Carolina on the road here to take on Ole Miss. Even though things are pretty set here in the SEC, these two teams are going to bring it. Another rebound for South Carolina. They're now a plus 10 in rebound margin for the number one team in the country. Who will win again by double digits. 71-57, a hug in midcourt. It's tough. I mean, sometimes we can, I mean, if you play a whole lot of players, sometimes we can't. Sometimes it's just the feel of the game and how it's going. Um, we just got to, we just got to stay together and keep it going no matter, no matter what. Um, I mean, you did a, our, our league is a pretty tough league. I mean, I think we have the best league from top to bottom, not just the top half's good. We are good top to bottom. And um, what you have been able to do in this league is pretty impressive. It has in the regular season. Um, you know, everybody talks about injuries this and injuries that and COVID this. Well, it happened to us too. But we've never used it as an excuse and we never will. Um, we got it done. And that's what it's gonna take to continue to do what we need to do to get things done.